Hey my amazing investors out there, welcome back to my channel once again. This is Abhishek who is not a financial advisor and this is the second episode of our real estate investing. So let's get started. So okay guys, before we jump on to the main content, I would just like to clarify one really common question. Buy or rent? Well, this is a vast topic and I would literally have to make a separate video on this. But just to give you a basic idea, like there are many calculators out there which you can use easily. So which can tell you that you're buying or you're renting, which one will be beneficial for you and you can use them. But guys, remember that will just give you a basic idea. Now there are many factors, extra factors, which you would have to consider. Like for example, if you're planning to buy a house or an apartment in some expensive city and uh, then probably of course renting wins but let's say you save the rent depending upon your calculations and you see that renting is easy or you are winning in renting and you're saving some money then are you reinvesting that money consistently somewhere to get some returns if not then sorry to say that in longer term of course buying can win and in that case even in the shorter term buying might win yeah but of course we have to consider many other factors like i said the area yeah so in expensive cities renting would be much easier let's say but if you are not consistent in reinvesting the money which you're saving by renting then guys this actually won't make so much sense yeah also the other thing which i would like to say and that might hurt a lot of people out there but that's just my opinion guys okay just my opinion uh that if because I saw that many people out there are buying their first house worth half a million or 1 million euros. That's okay, according to me, if you have a down payment of 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 euros. But I saw that many people are buying houses with just a down payment of 50,000, 60,000 euros. That means they don't have that kind of money. And I know there are emotions and there can be many factors which can trigger a person to buy their own house but just see from an investment point of view and i know that when you buy a house you don't see as an investment point of view and i also won't see that as an investment point of view because there are many emotions attached to that house which you will build by your own hands there will be memories inside and you won't be planning it to sell anytime soon that so that's not an investment and neither you are getting some rent from the house so it's not an investment from any point of view okay but just guys think about this that when you're paying a down payment of 60, 70,000 euros for a house worth half a million or 1 million euros, then first of all, it's you're tied to that. And I think you don't mind that, but it's okay. But according to me, it's not an investment. Yeah, like I said, but it becomes more of a liability, you know, because you are then tied up to that particular house and probably you cannot make some other investment because the majority of your income would be going to pay back to the bank. So that's why I want to just uh, like clarify this thing. And that's my point of view, guys, only. And I just want to help you guys out. And that's why I'm saying that according to me, if your first house is your biggest investment, then that's not an investment. That's a liability. What I would rather do is that buy a small place for my family, for my kids, not so expensive. Yeah. And uh, then I might just buy some other properties in nearby or I would just simply keep on renting and I buy and I would rather buy other properties for renting and to get a positive cash flow or something like that in some other cities. So that would be my strategy. But again, like I said, that's just my personal opinion. This topic is debatable and I can debate on this for hours and hours. So this is what I wanted to clarify. And this is an important message which I just wanted to give out for those who are planning to buy their first house, but are still thinking, should they be buying it or not? So first of all, buy versus rent. You should calculate all the factors and check if renting is much more cheaper for let's say five to 10 years even, then go in for rent. That would be my suggestion or my opinion. And uh, if you see that, okay, after four years, my buying is becoming more powerful, then go for it. But again, that would only be powerful, like I said, if the house won't be too expensive. So you have to think, yeah? Don't buy an expensive house. I mean, 
if you want to live lavishly and if you have the financial freedom then of course go on i mean i i don't want to like hinder somebody's wish this is just my opinion i just wanted to say it out loud so that's why i'm saying this and then maybe it might help someone so yeah just wanted to give out my opinion so now anyways with that being said let's get started so in our previous video guys i mentioned how equity really affects our investment in a good way of course so just to explain this a bit more i have this graph to show you guys so as you can see here this graph on the y-axis should be the amount that you are paying and on the x-axis should be the time it's not available um, i could not take the exact uh, y-axis and x-axis figures but this is how it should be so as you can see the blue line depicts that how you are paying off the interest back to the bank plus the credit and the value of the property which is let's say shown by the red line is increasing with time and with time this difference between the blue and the red line what you owe to the bank and what you actually own will increase this difference will increase and that means the equity value will increase with time so in simple words let's say you keep owning more and more of your property and your worth in other words increases so for example, just to explain this with some simple numbers quickly, let's say you bought this house worth 100K and you took a credit of 100K and now you paid back 20K to the bank from this 100K. That means you own 20% of the house now and you have an equity of 20% or 20K and then you pay for a bit longer without selling this house and now you paid 50k so now you own 50 percent of the house or in other words you have 50k as equity so a good idea would be let's say to refinance this equity from another bank and then you can get a credit of maybe 150k and then you can use this 50k for another investment in some other property or whatever you want and that's another advantage of real estate investment so you have to keep this in mind whenever you are buying a property that how much equity you can make what is the value of the house it would be a really good deal if the value of the house is worth more than what is expected in the market so then before the deal you already have a positive equity and that's what makes the deal even much better and guys that's why equity plays quite an important role and apart from that like we already saw that how leveraging in real estate can also be so effective and can give us a great opportunity and can give us annual returns of as high as 50 to 60 percent okay guys and now i would like to show you one more reason that why i went in for this deal but before that let me bring in some key figures into the picture which will also help you guys in making that decision for your future real estate deals Okay, so the first key figure which we will have to consider for our calculation is the annual growth rate of house prices in Germany. And in Germany, the annual growth rate for the house prices is approximately 2.3%. And this brings us to our last numbers game. So now we know that the average annual growth rate in Germany is 2.3% and the annual growth rate for our calculation will be 1.023. Now how we got this number is simply adding one to this percentage value. So 2.3 divided by 100 is 0.023 and adding 1 to this multiplication then we get our annual growth rate factor for our further calculations. So the number of years to hold is 30. So the number of years I have taken here is 30 years because that's the time span in which I have to pay off my credit. Now the factor of multiplication is 1.023. So this is an exponential factor. So how we get this is the base value is 1.023 and the exponent is 30. So 30 years which gives us a factor of 1.97 and then I I have my final approximate speculative value please i'm stressing this gain this is just a speculative calculation for calculating the value of my property after 30 years so how we get this is multiplying the original buying price which is 210,000 euros by 1.97 which is our factor of multiplication and this finally gives me an approximate value of my house after 30 years so value of my house after 30 years would be approximately around 413,000 euros now guys just please understand this that this is just a speculative method to calculate the future value of the house and this always gives me a raw idea of my comparison of my investment that means if i were to invest this down payment somewhere else then what would be my returns yeah so this is just to compare and my value of the house could be somewhere around this now your future value of your real estate of your property of course will depend on many other factors like renovations and etc yeah so this is just an approximate 
value and I'm repeating this again and again. So please be careful with this calculation. If you are using this particular calculation in your own benchmark or evaluation. Okay, so now please remember this number. And now let's just shortly compare our real estate investment with let's say some other sort of investment in the stock market maybe to see which deal is better. And just to clarify this, we are talking about just this particular deal, this particular house, yeah? So, and this will also show you that how these calculations are actually helping me to make my decisions and this might help you as well in future to make your real estate decision. Okay guys, so this is just a random compound interest calculator which you can easily find online. So let's play with some numbers. Okay, so the first column is the initial investment. So let's say if we did not invest that 22,000 euros as our down payment in this particular property and we invested in the stock market. So our one-time payment would be 22,000 euros. Here, the currency is dollars. So we are just using this calculator for the sake of comparison. So the currency in this case would not matter so much anyways. So now monthly contribution, I am taking here is $303, which is equal to our positive cash flow from this particular house to keep things fair. And I will take the same value thinking that this is the money that let's say I would save per month instead of earning it from this particular house or somewhere else and invest this into the stock market consistently. Now guys, this is the key here, being consistent, okay? If and only if you're consistently investing somewhere with decent average annual return then only this matters otherwise hands down real estate wins anyways yeah so the interest rate is let's say eight percent uh, we will keep here eight percent now this is a decent average annual return if you invest in some sort of etf or big blue chip companies without any volatility and without any stress so that you don't have to look again and again into your investment and change your strategies so let's keep things simple so which will help you to be consistent in this case so let's take an average of eight percent and then the interest variance we keep around one and then this gives us an amount of $633,000 at the end of 30 years. And now let's take the second scenario that is investing our positive cash flow of around $303 or euro, sorry, in the stock market with the same conditions to keep things fair for the sake of comparison. So the initial investment would be instead of 22,000 euros will be 303 euros or dollars in this case. Monthly contribution would be of course $303 because that's our positive cash flow. And the length of time is 30 years because till then I would be paying off my credit and for the sake of comparison, we keep 30 years and estimated interest rate again, 8% similar to our first scenario and the interest rate variance range is one and compounded frequency is annually. And that gives us an amount of $414,000 after 30 years. Now, of course, this is less than what we invest in the stock market but guys we are missing something and what we are missing well we are missing the final appreciated value of the property of the house after 30 years and if we add this appreciation or the final value of the property to the investment which we made per month from our positive cash flow in this particular case then guys of course my real estate investment wins by a huge margin and that's how i decided to go in for this particular investment now i know guys that i haven't taken the taxation into account plus the solidarity charges which are by the way have reduced in 2021 until a certain income and i know that these must be added but remember guys i have not included them because i will be investing this extra rental income every month okay plus if you guys are well aware about the financial rules or let's say you take a help of a good financial advisor which by the way you will need when anyways when you have multiple properties or you have multiple sources of income then you will need a help of a good financial advisor because then the taxation filing the taxation becomes quite complicated and so then you will get to know that there are many other ways through which you can actually save some decent amount of taxes legally yeah and they are not that complicated for example you can claim your expenses like telephone calls which you made for the rental properties for some repairs repairs cost advertisement costs for renting the apartments safety certificates and if you have split the property with some other partner then you can split the rent you have void period expenses as well so for example if you for any reasons you buy it to let the property and the property has been empty for a period of time then that is 
considered as expenses and not rental income and then you can also claim home office expenses that you are working from home being a landlord then of course you have financial cost you have carry forward losses you have capital gains avoidance then you have replacement of domestic items relief so so on and so on you have many many ways with which you can actually save some decent amount of taxes and that's why guys i haven't put any taxation amount a fixed taxation amount cost because like i said i will be investing this money back into the stock market or somewhere else and in the end of the year i would simply just keep aside some of my extra gains from this investment and remember that i would have a time of more than a year to realize this income into profits and with that being said guys i will pretty much wrap up today's video so take the matter into your own hands and i hope each and every one of you who have watched these two videos will make a good financial independence decision by creating that amazing passive source of income so good luck with that guys and of course if you need any kind of help and if you have any kind of questions or doubts just please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section down below or just message me personally i will definitely try to help each and every one of you so that's it guys that's all for today and i hope that you liked this video and if you did then don't forget to hit that like button and of course subscribe the channel so I will see you in the next one. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy and let's make some money. <laughs> Ciao.